welcome to uh, to the virtual digital economy seminar. It's uh, again a pleasure to welcome all of you. Our moderator today will be Luis Aguiar at the University of Zurich. He will introduce today's speaker in just a brief moment. Again, as usual, if you have any clarifying questions throughout the talk, please send these to everyone in the chat window. Louis will manage the queue and interrupt the speaker at a convenient time uh, for you to ask a question, or if you prefer, Louis can also ask the question for you. Um, we will also collect questions for the Q&A after the talk uh, in the same way for the chat window, so don't hesitate to send any questions uh, at any time. Today's session will be recorded, so if you do ask a question yourself, you will appear in the recording on YouTube. All right, I'm very happy to hand over to Louis. Thanks a lot, Hannes, uh, and thanks everyone for uh, for tuning in uh, today. Uh, so it, it's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, our, our speaker for today's seminar. So uh, Maria Petrova is a professor at uh, Universidad Pompeu Fabra in, in Barcelona and at the Barcelona School Graduate School of Economics. She's also a professor at the New Economic School in, in Moscow. And uh, so her research focuses on political economy, mass media economics, and corporate governance. And I'm sure most of you are familiar uh, with her work, which uh, has been published in top journals, not only in economics, but also in, in political science. So today she'll uh, talk about uh, echo cham chambers, uh, does online network structure matter? Uh, and I'm very looking forward to, to this talk. And without further ado, uh, Maria, the screen is all yours. Okay, so thanks so much for inviting me. It's great pleasure to be there. That's a joint work with uh, David, Gianluca, and Ruben. And Ruben will try to join us to help with answering some chat questions. Okay, so I guess that in this audience, I should not motivate uh, the paper too much. Surely internet and social media and digitization more generally are changing our lives, right? Uh, and for at least 20 years, people have thought that uh, like initially they thought that the internet could bring a death of distance and the world could become a global village maybe, but there were also arguments that uh, because the interactions on internet and social media are so, could become very fragmented and the result we could be more divided than ever. ever. So what we do in this particular paper? So there is uh, uh, by now a growing and uh, quite large literature on the impact of broadband internet and social media. Essentially, this literature either does field experiments or use some studies with quasi-random source of variation, and it compares what happens with and without internet or with and without social media. At the same time, uh, we know from that social media interactions are indeed uh, characterized by homophily, which is uh, uh, connections to like-minded people. And that uh, leads uh, to potentially uh, having people ending in so-called echo chambers or situation in which people only interact with like-minded content, like-minded people, like-minded opinion. Okay, so what we want to do in this paper is to answer the question, what happens if we could randomize the exposure to echo chambers? Then some communities will get connected to other communities which are very similar, which are like-minded, and some other communities could get connected to different-minded communities. So, the question that we ask is, does online network structure, or more concretely, do does diversity of online networks affect the distribution of political preferences? So in other words, whether exposure to different or similar community can, in fact, affect this political beliefs distribution. Okay, so what would we expect? 
So, so that's a question that uh, was not asked before. So, uh, but there is already some theoretical literature in economics and political science, which uh, would uh, predict some implications of uh, uh, exposure to like-minded content or like-minded communities or different-minded communities. So uh, the first hypothesis in the literature is like-minded hypothesis or echo chambers hypothesis. And that predicts that the exposure to like-minded content will make people more extreme. Right? Uh, so one potential mechanism for this is that you combine Bayesian persuasion and correlational neglect, so which is... Uh, you uh, underestimate the extent of correlation between your connections and your sources, but it is just one way. Another uh, alternative hypothesis is different-minded hypothesis or backlash hypothesis. And that says that uh, if you get exposed to different-minded content, then you become more extreme. And that's because of perhaps some cost thinking, because, because uh, uh, like small changes in information do not affect your political uh, decisions, right? So this is about exposure to different minded, like-minded communities and political preferences. The second type of question is maybe it should be our first question. So if we allocate people to a different minded treatment or uh, if people get to uh, get exposed to different minded information, whether they would prefer to switch, whether they indeed adjust their, adjust their networks on Facebook on other social media or switch to traditional media. That's something that we want to study, to also understand. And finally, uh, we also want to stress that there is a difference between uh, individual and community approach. So we are going to study counties. We are not going to study individual people. But we think that it's important to study counties. Why? because there could be some spillover effect. Because as a Democrat in Democratic county, you might feel differently as compared to being a Democrat in a Republican county because of uh, such mechanisms as social pressure or social learning. And if, if we don't have any social pressure or social learning, then our study is similar to uh, what uh, field experiments do. Typically, they just take away access to Facebook, for example, as in Alcott et al. study. But if there is social pressure and social learning, then we can also have dynamics in terms of convergence or divergence of political opinion. So in particular, like-minded hypothesis with social learning pre predicts convergence within county. Similarly, different-minded plus social learning predicts convergence within county from different-minded exposure. And finally, our switching hypothesis predicts convergence of consumptions of other sources of, of other news sources. Okay. So, but before we proceed, I want to highlight some empirical challenges. So first, uh, we would need data on social media links between different communities. And we are going to use uh, quite publicized data on Facebook connections between different counties. And that's the universe of all Facebook connections for given years. Second, uh, we need to define, to create a measure of online ideological diversity, right? And to deal with this, we propose uh, a measure of county level homophily, which is based on two ingredients. First is ideological distance between counties. 
And second is Facebook links between these counties. And last but not least, we need uh, exogenous variation in uh, ideological diversity, right? To exposure to like-minded versus different-minded communities. And for identification, we are going to use conflict between Google and Facebook. And I'm going to be more specific about it. And together with the data on po popularity of different email options. So, and let me give you a preview of the results. So what we find is we report uh, two types of findings and four findings. <laughs> so uh, first we find that exposure to different minded communities uh, leads to convergence of political preferences within counties. At the same time, we see more extreme vote patterns and more extreme ideology and more dispersion across countries. And we also see some evidence of switching. We see lower uh, frequency of use of Facebook. We see higher probability of adopting other social media. And we also observe some uh, convergence of traditional news consumption based and mostly for national news. Okay, let me stop here maybe before like and to ask if there are any questions so far. We don't have any questions in the in the chart so far. So I think okay, great. go ahead. Okay. So let me be more precise about what we are doing. So first I'm going to explain you what kind of variables we are going to use. A second, uh, I'm going to talk about our identification. I'm going to talk about Gmail policy shock uh, and how we are going to use it uh, in order to study the questions that I talked about. And finally, I'll present the results and we'll talk about the mechanisms. Okay, so in terms of data, as I mentioned, we first, we use social connectivity index of Facebook, which is the Facebook data on the universe of all connections between US counties in 2016 and 2020. Then we are going to use Google to measure relative popularity of different email options. And I'm going, like, I will explain later why we need this. And then we use data from census, county level presidential results, and uh, data on ideology from Gallup Daily Poll. Okay, let me show you how this uh, Facebook connections look like. So what you can see on the map is the probability, the relative probability that somebody has a friend, Facebook friend in Cook County, Illinois, right? So as you can see that most of uh, these uh, places are quite similar, quite close, but there is also some heterogeneity. And then we are going to, do it uh, for all counties in the US. And what you can see now is that uh, how for every particular county in the US, uh, what are the counties uh, this county is connected to? So, and you can see that some counties, they have like very uh, geographically concentrated links and some other counties, they have very diverse links. Okay, so, but eventually we want to construct a measure of uh, like uh, connections to like-minded versus different-minded counties, right? So we need a measure of ideological distance. And uh, here uh, to create this measure, essentially what we do for every county pair, we create a measure of ideological distance using Gallup data, right? Uh, from very liberal to very conservative. And then 
we weighed this ideological distance by Facebook links. And we say that the online ideological distance is a weighted average of all counties this given uh, account is connected to. Uh, the ideological distance to these counties and the weights which represent Facebook links. Oh, and of course, this way it's, they should be and they will be endogenous. And so, this is how, yeah? Yeah, so we have a, a small question by uh, Hannes. Yes. I don't know if you wanna unmute yourself or? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's it's really marginal, but so as so I was wondering what the share of international connection is relative to these national connections you just showed. Is, is, that, is it relevant that people have cross country connections or is it really tiny share? Uh, that's a good question. I think that it's a tiny share, uh, but uh, for some, like for some places, it could be not tiny. So, so, so far we are going to ignore that. But uh, um, as you've seen, even like uh, in some counties, people don't have any connections even in the U.S. other than some small number of neighbors. So what? Yeah, okay. it might be quite heterogeneous, as you say, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> okay, so this is how online ideological distance looks like. And as you can see here, um, the, there is quite a bit of variation. This is just the raw data across all counties, and there is quite a bit of variation uh, across the US. So, we also need some measures for convergence or divergence of political preferences. So we are, and for extremeness. So we are going to use several measures. So, and one of them would be called political homogeneity, which is, this is just the probability that two random people from the same county are going to vote for the same party, right? So, uh, and this would be our measure of uh, convergence. And we are also going to use different precinct level measures, which would be available only for 2016 because there is no full precinct level data before 2016. And this measure of extremeness, we are going to use two, like we are going to use vote margins, extreme vote margins, and strong partisan attachment. And this, for example, our change in local political homogeneity between 2008 and 2016. And you can see there is quite a bit of variation, but there is some also spatial correlation. Okay, so now let's like, uh, I don't know, like if there are, like I'm going to, tell now, uh, talk a lot about construction of our policy shock variable. So if there are some questions on me measurement, maybe that's good time to stop. No more questions on that? Okay, so let me uh, explain you how, why we think that we can identify the effect of exposure to like-minded versus different-minded communities. So what you see now on the map is the relative popularity of different email options. So we all got used to the fact that by now Gmail is most popular uh, email option, but it was not the case always. Back in 2006, for example, Hotmail was the most popular email option in the US. And around 2009 and 2010, uh, Yahoo Mail was quite popular as well. And why is it important? Let me explain you. We are going to, for identification, we are going to use a conflict between Google and Facebook. And Google essentially stopped allowing Facebook to automatically import Gmail contacts. And what does it mean? It means that, uh, like uh, you probably forgot how 
Facebook uh, looked like in the early stage of development, but before 2010, when you were signing up for Facebook, the application also tried to help you to find friends. And the easiest way to do this was to just use your email contacts. So uh, after you give the application your information, it also asked, are your friends already on Facebook? And you could type your email and your email password. And then in turn, it would tell you that, oh, this, this, this person from your email contacts are already on Facebook. So, of course, it would not, uh, like, if you really wanted to connect to somebody on Facebook, you would connect. But for some weak links, that was important on the margin. And what happened after November of 2010? After November of 2010, you could do this automatically import data on your friends on Facebook for Yahoo and for Hotmail. But you could no longer do it for Gmail. So people, if both of you are going to have Gmail, then you have a lower probability of finding each other at the beginning when you sign up for Facebook. So, and this is uh, relative email popularity. And as you can see that uh, like around the time of policy change, uh, these three emails were, had approximately the same levels of popularity. So now the question is, does it matter? And, uh, like we studied this question by looking at Gmail complementarity for in different moments in time for future connections. And what you can see is, and this is county level analysis, right? This is uh, on the left hand side here we have, uh, we are trying to predict Facebook links between county I and county J. And what you can see on the graph is that if you both had Gmail before November of 2010, then if anything, you had a higher probability of getting connected. Maybe you were like, I don't know, uh, more like interested in technology overall. But right after November of 2010, if you both of you had Gmail, then the probability that you are going to get connected declined dramatically. And, uh, and this is uh, just the average graph for a simple regression with uh, fixed effects for both counties. And you can see that it seems to have a lingering uh, effect on connections up to 2016. You remember that the shock was in 2010. So that's what we are going to exploit. We are going to uh, create a Gmail complementarity policy shock, which is equal to Gmail complementarity in uh, eight quarters after the shock. And we are going to subtract Gmail complementarities in eight quarters before the shock. And uh, so, so we essentially control with this specification, we control for the type of uh, connections. We are just exploiting who got Gmail earlier and who got Gmail later. And as a result of this, uh, Gmail policy shock is going to have make some of the counties more connected than predicted and some of the counties less connected than predicted. Right? Because again, we look before and after and we look at Gmail complementarity. So it's not absolute level of Gmail complementarity, it's just how it changed around uh, November 2010. So, but now we want to use this source of variation in order to uh, 
say that some counties get connected to like-minded counties and some counties get connected to different-minded counties. So we need to define like-mindedness, right? So, and what we do here, but we have a number of other alternative ways to do it, is to, uh, we use social demographic characteristics of the county and pre-existing political differences to predict uh, similarity between counties, so-called social distance between counties. So this is, for example, what we do. So imagine one particular county. So we take here a brown county, Alabama. And you can see what you can see around brown county, Alabama, is uh, all counties within 500 miles. So we take 500 miles, but we can vary this threshold because most of your connections are going to be to geographically close counties. And as you can see that here, some counties uh, in uh, Blount County, uh, some counties, uh, they had a high level of uh, Gmail complementarity and some counties, they have low level of Gmail complementarity. So in some counties, it was easy to find friends. In some counties, it was difficult to find friends because both of you were using Gmail after the shock, right? Uh, so now we also, uh, look at the social distance. We combine the previous data with the data on how different are different counties in Alabama from Blount County, Alabama. And here you can see that majority of counties in this 500 mile circle, they actually, they are like like-minded counties. They, are, they have low social distance to Blount County, Alabama, while there are also some counties which have high social distance to Blount County, Alabama. And here they are highlighted in green, right? So, and this is how we are going to construct our variable. So we say that Gmail complementarity policy shock, we aggregate all these complementarities for all individual counties. And we compare how easy it it was to, for you to find friends in uh, high social distance counties as compared with low social distance counties. And in this particular example, it was relatively more difficult to find friends in low social distance counties. That means less connection to like-minded counties, All right? So, and, the difference between these two bars, essentially it tells us whether you are more likely to get connected to like-minded counties versus different-minded counties. So, and then we repeat this exercise for all counties in Alabama. So, and you can see that for some of the counties, uh, uh, some of these counties, they got, uh, it was easier to get connected to like-minded counties. For some of them, it was easier to get connected for different-minded counties. So here, for example, you can see, uh, like here we just subtract uh, the first uh, bar from the second bar, and you can see, and this is our Gmail social distance variable. And you can see that for some of these counties, it's positive and some of these counties, it's negative, which is some counties, they got connected to, more connected to like-minded counties and some counties get more connections to different-minded counties. And this is what we get. This is essentially our Gmail complementarity variable when we subtract uh, different minded from like my mi like minded from different minded and you can see that uh, after taking away state fixed effects there is quite a bit of variation in this variable and that's what we are going to use as our key um, right hand side variable and we can also try to run some 
something like a first stage, putting online ideological distance on the left-hand side, where we just take ideological distance and weight it by Facebook links, and putting this Gmail complementarity shock on the right-hand side. And we can control for a bunch of things like state fixed effect, baseline email shares, like how, like own email shares, how, how, which kind of emails did you use as a county, like uh, work in different moments in time. So baseline social distance, social economic characteristic trends, baseline politics in 1996. So you can see that as we go from uh, specification without any controls whatsoever to very super controlled specification, our coefficient does not change much. So it's really seemed to be about something quite uh, quasi random as we go. Okay, so, okay, maybe I will stop here because I'm not sure like whether this construction of the variable um, was uh, explained well, so. I think it's uh, pretty clear. We, we don't have any questions yet in the chat, everything is, Okay, so, okay. <laughs> so maybe I'll have time <laughs> to talk about the rest of the results without rushing this too much. So, so let, now let me talk about the results. So we got this uh, Gmail complementarity policy shock variable. What we are going to do with this? So I will mostly show you uh, the results based on the reduced form, but we also have parallel results in the IV framework for the scaling. So what we see here, we see here how local political homogeneity, or you remember the probability that uh, two people, two random people from the same county are going to vote for a particular, for the same party how this variable changes uh, over time. And you can see that there were no pretrend before 2010. There is some small positive effect already in 2012, and there is much larger and stable effect both in 2016 and 2020. So why the effect is smaller in 2012? Probably uh, one of the reasons is that it's uh, like the, uh, Facebook was not as much popular during that time. So, but of course, also political campaigns in 2012 and 2016 were quite different in terms of social media involvement. Okay, so, and what this result suggests, they speak in favor of different-minded hypotheses. They say that if you get exposed to different-minded content, then you see within county convergence and vice versa. If you get exposed to like-minded content, then you see like the like divergence within county. Okay, so here I will show you to SLS just for the sake of scaling. In terms of the magnitude, we find that one standard deviation of online social distance led to 25% increase in local political homogeneity. So it's quite sizable effect. Okay, so let us also look at some of other results. So what you can see here is vote margins, right? So uh, vote margins would be a measure of uh, skewed uh, political preferences. And again, there is no effect before 2010. There is small positive effect in 2012, and there is a larger, positive and significant effect in both 2016 and 2020. And we have similar results for different measures of extreme voting. So we can also, for 2016, we can also look at within county outcomes. So we collect the data on pacing level voting. Right, so, and here again, the first three measures are measures of within county convergence. 
And second three measures are measures of extremeness of world shares. And you can see that we use three different measures of within county conversions, which is standard deviation, interquartile range, and just a range between the maximum and minimum. And all of them, they like exhibit uh, convergence. So that if you get exposed to different minded uh, uh, counties, then precinct within your county are becoming closer to each other, right? And we also see this positive effect for uh, like uh, extreme vote margins above 20, above 40, above 60. So, so far we only talked about just like Republicans versus Democrats, and we did not talk about intensity of preferences. What you can see here is that uh, uh, we also study how our variable, which is exposure to different minded uh, counties, online exposure, affects uh, strong partisan identification. In CCS, there is a seven uh, point question about generally speaking, do you identify yourself as strong Democrat, not very strong Democrat, lean Democrat, and so on and so forth. So in the, we create a dummy variable, which is equal to one for the extreme two uh, options. And you can see that we also see increase in the, a strong partisan identification, which we interpret as more extreme political preferences. Okay, so uh, then you would probably ask me, what about the effect on average? Is the effect driven by Democrats or by Republicans? And we actually, we try to look at it and I can tell you that there is no effect on average. And uh, like all heterogeneity analysis that we try to run suggests that the effect is coming from both democratic and Republican side. And you will also see something about this when we talk about uh, traditional news exposure. In some, uh, what the results so far suggest that uh, if uh, some counties get exposed to different minded counties, that leads to within county convergence of political preferences and divergence of political preferences across counties or stronger measures of political extremism. At the same time, we find no effect on uh, the vote share, which is uh, we did not find that exposure to like-minded or different-minded communities helped any of, or any of the parties. Okay, so uh, I don't know, like, should I finish with the mechanism or should I stop to take questions? So you tell so, me. So we have some questions in the chat, but uh, Ruben has already uh, answered some of them. Um, there is another question by uh, Anon Goel. I don't know if you would like to be unmuted. Uh, otherwise, I can just Does that work. Otherwise, I can just ask the question. The question is about uh, whether why do you compute your um, uh, the change in complementarity between the future eight and previous eight periods? Uh, whether it's just uh, uh, the level of complementarity at the time of shock is enough or not. Um, no, we essentially want to, uh, maybe uh, some pairs of counties, they have, uh, I don't know, like maybe they both are like uh, uh, more like uh, have preferences for being more technological that Gmail is, is essentially there could be some uh, like uh, levels of um, uh, uh, why 
different pairs of counties are different. So we essentially want to control for pressure shock. So, 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 so we don't want to compare uh, places that would never become Gmail places with places that uh, uh, like uh, were Gmail places from the very beginning. So like this way we exploit just short uh, time variant shock, you know, like just before and just after. So, but just before is just to, to control for, you know, like this pre-existing, like whatever factors could determine this preference. But I mean, like we can also do it, uh, I guess, without this. So, um, I just uh, think that the identification argument is stronger when we compare. Parents. Right. So there are no other reply, Frank clarification question at this point. So maybe you can uh, go ahead. Okay. So let me also tell you a little bit what we found in terms of the mechanisms. So if you remember, we had a switching hypothesis, which is uh, if your county pre was predicted to get connected to different minded places, maybe these people will respond somehow and respond by say using less Facebook maybe and more other options. So what you see here is that we see some evidence of a homogenization of TV consumption. If you get exposed to other uh, different minded uh, counties and here you can see how, how consumption of different uh, TV channels varies as a function of uh, exposure to different minded counties. And you can see that it will reduce the consumption of local uh, channels, but increase consumption some of the national channels. And you can see both positive effect for CNN, but you also see positive effect for Fox, for example. So it's not really concentrated that in the left uh, part of the spectrum. So uh, this is one thing. So what this implies that probably people are spending less time on social media because maybe social media is not giving them uh, the echo chamber that they would like to find. And uh, so they're switching to watch more national TV. And we also see some change in the patterns of social media consumption. So we see some intensive margin effect for the usage of Facebook. People are like uh, in Comscore panel affected like, uh, who got exposed to different minded counties according to our data. They are less likely to uh, go to Facebook even though they were like uh, to visit Facebook, even though the number of users is approximately the same. But for other social media, we see that people are likely to, more likely to join other social media that uh, we see in the visits to Reddit, Instagram, and Twitter. So, and we can also look at this other, uh, the number of machines uh, from which we observe visits to this other social media as a function of different minded exposure to different minded communities and on Facebook. And you see that all of these coefficients except Instagram, they are positive and significant. So essentially what we find is that people are trying to avoid being like if, uh, uh, somehow it so happens that on uh, Facebook, you often get different minded information and you don't like it particularly. And, and as a result, uh, you don't like your Facebook ex experience that much. So what you do, you either switch to other social media or you switch to just uh, traditional media altogether. You switch away from internet and you go to CNN or Fox, depending on your pre-existing political preferences. So 
In terms of the mechanism, what we can see in terms of hypothesis that I outlined in the beginning. So first we see no evidence that uh, for echo chambers hypothesis that like-minded exposure makes people more extreme. No, like we find, if anything, we find the opposite. Second, we find clear evidence for switching hypothesis, which together with social learning, right? Otherwise we would not have convergence, the homogeneity of uh, news consumption. And finally, our evidence is also consistent with different-minded hypothesis, but we don't have any independent uh, you know, source of data to confirm because so far it's observationally equivalent with switching hypothesis. So for switching, we have clear extra evidence from additional sources of data such as Nielsen and SCOM score. For that, we don't have extra evidence. So, but we cannot reject it either. So let me conclude. Uh, so what we do in this paper, we study the impact of uh, online network structure, in particular online homophily on the distribution of political opinions. And for identification, we use the conflict between Google and Facebook in 2010, which created a shock to Facebook connections across US and some counties got connected to like-minded counties, the other counties got connected to different-minded counties. And we find that higher diversity online led to convergence of political preferences within counties and also more extreme vote patterns and more extreme political preferences based on CCS data. And finally, we also find that uh, the one likely mechanism for what we observe is changing in the patterns of traditional news consumption and convergence of this traditional news consumption. Okay, so let me stop here and I'll be happy to answer the remaining questions. Thanks a lot, Maria, for the super interesting talk. Uh, so we have a few questions in the in the chat. So um, some of them have, have been answered already, but I think Hannes had some comments uh, that he also added. Uh, so maybe you want to go ahead. Uh, Hannes, do you want to ask your questions or? Uh I didn't have a new question. I've asked a lot already, but I, I think Ruben replied. Okay. So I guess maybe it's related to what uh, what Hannes asked about the fact that when people switch, uh, you know, to um, to these other channels, it's interesting to see that Google increases uh, more than than others. I mean, YouTube, which is owned by Google. Um, do you know if there's been other changes around this, this the, the fact when Google decided to not allow Facebook to do this anymore, did they also change something uh, on, on their YouTube platform, for instance, or um, uh, I'm just curious about this. Uh, I, I don't think that they like, I'm not sure that they owned YouTube platform back in 2010. Uh, and uh, but I, I, I should double check, like to the best of my understanding, uh, uh, Google uh, was trying to launch uh, uh, Google Plus social network, and then they got into several conflicts with different uh, like uh, places. They, there was also a conflict between Google News and the Associated Press, but I think it was in a different year. So, and it was not so relevant. So, well, uh, so, so, so I should probably know more if there was something about specific about YouTube. We also tried to look at the usage of, you know, like search, and we tried to look at how often people go to just Google, and we did not find any difference. I mean, like people in uh, like uh, counties that uh, were 
exposed in Facebook to different minded or like minded counties, they Google things with the same propensity. So. So we don't have uh, any other questions in, in the chat, I think. Uh, unless I missed them. So I think it would be it, it, this on this graph that you had there uh, it would be interesting, Which, and maybe I missed this have? part, but yes. I'm wondering if is there so this is kind of about the sensitivity of people to you know switch away from a content that they don't like anymore because they, they don't like the what they're exposed to. Um, is, is there a difference between people who are leaning towards Democrat versus Republicans, for instance, and their propensity to go away and, uh, you know, go outside of Facebook? Oh, well, that, that's an interesting question, actually. Uh, I am not sure that we have this political preferences, but I should check whether Comscore has this. On the other hand, uh, Genskov and Shapira, they wrote this paper with Comscore yeah. data. So, so, so probably they have, but even if they don't have uh, the preferences, uh, what they have is demographics. Mm -hmm. And we can predict political preferences from demographics. Right. So, and then like, yes, then I can probably tell you. So perhaps uh, Democrats are, you know, like switching towards uh, social, other social media while Republicans are switching more to like national news consumption. But as you've seen here, that we also see some effect for Fox News. So, so it's maybe not as large as for CNN, but it's, uh, it's still positive and significant. So, so, so one of the things that people do, uh, if they don't like, uh, uh, like, so one of our hypotheses is that what could be going on uh, is that if you get exposed to different minded content, maybe you have like, why do you increase your consumption of national news? Maybe, you know, like you want to engage into a conversation. Maybe you want to prove that the other side is wrong and you are trying to dig for more information. So one of the things that could be going on is that uh, um, is is not simply switching is that these people also want to get more information but i'm not sure if we can like test this hypothesis more 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 explicitly so, the implications are also quite interesting right because if uh if exposing people to uh to these changes makes them go away from facebook then facebook has strong incentives to uh you know not do it to create the algorithms and filters exactly. that were blamed for you know, increased right. polarization for quite a while. Yeah, I think that's that's an interesting implication. Um, no, the, yeah, you are right. So, so, and that's probably one of the reasons why, at least, they have incentives to do it. <laughs> Yeah, so, so, so I guess that was also a bit related to the or, or the motivation of my uh, remark about the YouTube, the switching to YouTube. I mean, I don't know if that's what's going on, but when I saw that plot, uh, I mean, my first thought was that might not really have been an unintended consequence by Google, right? <clears throat> it might actually have been exactly what they wanted, that uh, they keep people more on their services, um, which whichever they are. Um, and uh, so I'm not sure if that's really what we're seeing, that this is kind of an, an, an effect of competition of platforms for users and their time. Um, I'm not sure if that can be said uh, or not. Oh, here, like we can also try to isolate just Twitter, Reddit and Instagram, and we will also have this positive and significant effect, but that's a good point about YouTube that uh, uh, 
no, from this point of view, every platform should have like different options for their users. If you don't like Facebook, go to YouTube. If you don't like YouTube, go back to Facebook. I mean, like, uh, so yeah. uh, I'm not sure what would be implication for antitrust. So, so mm -hmm. if all of these platforms start to, you know, like uh, be joining each other instead of being competitive, then there must be some antitrust implications. Can, can I ask one other question that, um, uh, yep. that I had in the chat? I mean, it was just just an, an assumption and 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 just just so for me to to know. I suppose um, it's impossible to know Gmail adoption at the at the county or or state level. There's probably yeah, there's probably no data on that, right? Mm, to the best of my knowledge, no. Like, no, yeah. we use this uh, uh, Google search data because this is one of the things that people do. I mean, like, uh, if they don't want to type, you know, like uh, their Gmail and they don't, it, uh, like, at least initially, they just go and mm. search if they use it because this quick way to get to where you want. I, uh, I have to confess that I still like uh, the way I find Google Calendar, which I use frequently, is just to type it into Google. <laughs> and then it's the, the first reference, you know? Yeah. So That's we have it. another question in, in, the, in the chat uh, by Grazia. So maybe I'll, I'll unmute you if you're able to. Good morning. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. I think that we have not too many questions because it was so clear. And uh, but I was wondering whether um, at the time of your studies, all the media had the Facebook page. I think that you can get to the date of creation of Facebook page, and uh, my guess is that the local. Uh, news are less likely to have a Facebook page. So maybe you can get something there to see the direct interaction that uh, users can have on, on, with, with the given media within Facebook. Uh, but this is just my guess. I have no idea if this is, was the case at that time. Now I think that every all news, all media is a Facebook page, but that at that time maybe there is some difference that you can get and some heterogeneity. Oh, thanks a lot. I think it's uh, interesting. It's, I think it's very interesting suggestions. I know from the other paper that we wrote uh, that uh, politicians, uh, like if we look at Twitter and Facebook accounts of politicians, then again now, like uh, they are more frequent, but in the beginning. Uh, like some of them adopted, uh, the, like started these accounts and some of them, they did not start for as long as till 2016. And by 2016, I guess that now everybody is convinced that you need to have social media account in US politics. So um, what we tried to do is we tried to look at uh, the links outside of Facebook, whether people are more likely to go to, for example, CNN or Fox uh, page from inside Facebook. But we don't observe, you know, like uh, uh, whether they are more likely to go to CNN Facebook page because it's not it's not recorded differentially for Comscore. We only look at ex can look at external visits, and this external visits are not too frequent. So so we didn't find any significant results. But also we see that the number of this like the average numbers of such visits are really small. So this could be one of the explanation why we don't find it. But yes, so local news, social, I believe that there are some people who have uh, collected data on local news, social media accounts. So, so, so we might uh, try to, to get this. Thanks. We have another question in the chat by Jonathan Gale. I don't know if I can unmute you if you want to ask it.
or otherwise I'll just sorry Mr. Oh, David. Uh, can you hear me uh, yes thank you for the presentation first of all um so during like uh, you listed different social media platforms which uh, changed in uh, users uh, given the effect um, what about like 4chan for instance I mean that's where the whole QAnon and stuff started so is there an effect there or is it too small oh uh, say it again I'm not sure that I heard like uh, the the like what about or what I think he was asking about uh, whether you have data on, on users switching to other channels like 4chan, for instance, where uh, uh, Kwan and Star. Oh, the, the, the other channels, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. other than the four channels. Yeah, 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 got it. Uh, well, in theory, we should uh, have information about this. In practice, we once processed Nielsen data for this four channels. And we need to process it again, and it it just takes time. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we it's definitely on our to do list. We want to look at this. Okay, so I think we're uh, right on time. So uh, thanks again, Maria, for the great presentation. Super interesting.